And there's another translation. That's from King James Version. There's another translation at the bottom. For our struggle is not against human opponents, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers in the darkness around us, and evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. Okay? As soon as I heard this man say this scripture, I had a vision. Sitting there on a couch in this fellow's house, watching a video, as soon as I heard this, I had a vision right in front of my face. You know, I'd heard about visions and people getting things like that when I was in the New Age. I talked to many people that had had vision experiences, prophetic experiences. Never had one myself. Always wanted to. But it wasn't until I became a Christian that I had one. And it was during this reading of the scripture. What did I see? I saw the alien gray right in front of my face. And in the instant, it morphed to the most horrific thing I had ever seen. In that moment, I knew that what we were dealing with was not what it appeared to be. I said, stop that video. You guys, I've just seen something I've got to share with you. And when I shared that with them, I said, you know, I don't want to do this UFO stuff anymore. I said, this is not where we need to be dealing with. I said, I'm going to stop this. And my partner, Wes, was there with me, and he says, you know what? I agree with you. As a Christian, I've been for many years. I don't know how I missed this. So we agreed to put everything aside and move on becoming Christians and doing Bible study. About a month went by, and I get this, like, excuse me, I need your attention here. I didn't know where this was coming from. And being a new Christian, I didn't know how God talked to you. But he was trying to get my attention. And I, what I was getting was, you're not done yet. And I said, well, yes, I am. I said, I see what this is. I don't want any more part of it. He says, you're not done yet. I said, all right. What do you want me to do here? He says, I want you to take this back out what you've learned back out to where you came from. And I said, if this is God, I can't do that. I said, I can't take this word of God back to the new age, the metaphysical realm, the non-believers, because they don't believe the word of God. I said, you got to give me something better than that. Well, nobody told me you don't talk to God like that. <laughs> um, so I thought, okay, that, that'll hold him off. A couple of weeks went by, and I get, excuse me. I go, okay, you already got what you need. And I thought, I already have what I need? So I told my partner, Wes, what I was getting here. And he says, well, let's go back and look at what we have. We came across a particular video we had done six months before, before we came to the truth. We had videoed this person in his home. We had sat there right in front of him, listening to him, watched him, never heard a word he said. The video caught it, though. That's interesting. Went back and played this particular video, and this is what we found. What follows is the case of Bill D's experience that took place in Christmas, Florida in 1976. His abduction started out typically late at night in bed. Earlier in the evening, he saw some anomalous lights through the living room window over a forest north of his house. He assumed it was a police helicopter searching for drug runners or something. Whatever it was, it agitated his dogs for several hours thereafter. He eventually went to bed. He was lying in bed, kept wide awake by the barking dogs when paralysis set in. He was unable to cry out. He could, he could see nothing but a whitish gray, like a mist or a fog although he sensed someone or something was in his room. His wife didn't awaken. The next thing he knew, he was being levitated above his bed. He then had the sensation he was being suspended by what felt like a pole inserted into his rectum. By this time, he was alive with terror, but couldn't scream. Here's where the story becomes very interesting. The following is an excerpt taken directly from the transcript of Mr. D's interview. 
I thought I was having a satanic experience, that the devil had gotten a hold of me and had shoved a pole up my rectum and was holding me up in the air. So helpless, I couldn't do anything. I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, or Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I did, there was a feeling or a sound or something that either my words that I had thought or the words that I had tried to say or whatever had hurt whatever was holding me up in the air on this pole. And I felt like it was withdrawn and I fell. I hit the bed because it was like I was thrown back in the bed. I really can't tell, but when I did, my wife woke up and asked why I was jumping on the bed. Typical type of experience. I hear this many times, you know, same scenarios. In all the research we had done, we had never heard of a case of anybody stopping an experience. All the researchers, the top researchers, were saying that this could not be done. You couldn't stop an abduction experience. They had no record of it. So here I am with a case where a guy says he called out in the name of Jesus and stopped an experience. Was this one case unusual? But I knew I had something powerful. When God showed me to go back and look at this video, I knew this was something unique. And if I could confirm that it wasn't just unique in that one case, then this could be absolutely huge in the UFO community. I contacted these top researchers in the country. I said, guys, I've got a case here. I don't know what to make of it. I shared them the case. Each time I did, they asked, can we go off the record? And I said, sure. I can't tell you their names, but I can tell you what they said. Each one of them said, yes, sir, we've come across cases like this ourselves, where they've been able to stop it using prayer or Jesus' name. I said, excuse me, how come we have never seen this documented? You're telling us otherwise, that it can't be done, it can't be stopped. First answer they usually gave us, we didn't know what to make of it. I would have been fine with that. The second answer is what puzzled me and got me kind of angry. They, because it was that one that I want you to hear for sure. They said, we couldn't go there because it might affect our credibility in the realm. Do I hear cover-up? Did I mention government? No, I didn't. What I'm telling you is there's a cover-up about this information, and has been, by the top researchers that you people rely on to hear the truth from. I said to them, you know, guys, I got nothing to lose. I work for a living. I don't write books. I don't do all this stuff that you do. I said, I just want to document this as a researcher. So I went after those cases because I now knew they were there. Over the next 10 years, I have now worked with over 400 cases of people that have been able to stop the abduction experience in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. This is documented evidence. Okay? Documented evidence. I questioned, I had to show biblically if this was relating to the Bible, where the authority come from. Back to Ephesians. At the end of Ephesians in that chapter talking about spiritual warfare, after putting on the whole armor of God, which is defense, protection, these people were showing that there was an offensive move. An offensive move. You can be in defense with protection, but to defeat the enemy, these entities, you have to do something offensive. Ephesians 6.19, And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. That's what these people have done in the presence of these entities. To make known the mystery of the gospel. What's that mystery? This is where the authority comes that they're able to stop these entities because it's Christ in you. That power was passed down from God to the Son, Father to the Son, over everything above the earth, on the earth, and below the earth. When you become a Christian, give yourself to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit passes that authority on to you. Talk about high technology from planets, from who knows where, I don't think this is what we're dealing with. And all this supposed high technology that, that they seem to have, guess what? It takes only one name 
to put them in their place. We are dealing with a huge, probably the most important deception on humanity. These are entities masquerading as high technological aliens, but they can be defeated by one name. I have case upon case upon case upon case that can prove that. Different causes for the experience, they're still questioning this. We're, researchers don't know where this comes from. Where does the experience come from? We found answers to this, working with these testimonies. First one, you asked for it. Think people asked for this? Excuse me, we stand at the tables at these conventions and share our information with people. I've had people come right up to me and say, I'd sure like to experience that. Be careful what you ask for. Some people unknowingly open a door to the experience by being involved in New Age or occult activities. When you engage in the unknown things outside of God, the Creator and His Word, you make yourself vulnerable to these entities. We have found this reason to be most often the root cause. And then there are also people that fall into the generational cycle. You saw the generational cycle working right there with Joyce and her family. This can continue through generations. These are the things we found. My website, ce4research.com, I've got over 75 of the testimonies up on there as evidence for you free to go see and read what these people have been through. Read that they have been set free by the name and authority of Jesus Christ from this experience. You seeing a spiritual connection here? Absolutely. I even have audio testimonies that we're posting up there now. You can hear them do it in their own voice. Not just a written testimony. I've had researchers say, ah, you printed that up and stuck it up there. No. They're furious about having this information out there, the rest of the UFO community. They are absolutely furious. You saw my little poster out on the table, Most Hated Man in Ufology. Last year, I was a director for the city of the, of the UFO conference, 2008, for Roswell. I, had, I invited some of the top researchers in the country, to come, in the world, actually, to come here and talk and give their information. But I also got to talk on the last day. And when I shared this information, they were absolutely furious. And they have been furious ever since. There's blogs upon blogs going out there. I am now the most hated man in ufology. Okay? Because I dared share something that they couldn't. Those people that I talked to before, those researchers, they never come against me. The ones that I didn't talk to, oh boy. You should hear the things they say. Moving on. This is an example of how we take people through and help them. This is our counseling side of it, the eight R's. Um, this will be on the video for you guys to see. I'm not going to take too much time and go through them. But we take them through. We help them recognize what they're doing. We help them take responsibility for what they're now recognizing, what they've been involved with, uh, repenting to God for being involved with it, renouncing it, getting rid of everything, or making it your enemy, removing it, uh, resisting it if it tries to come back, because you're going to piss these entities off and they're going to try to harass you for a while, okay? Which does happen. Rejoice, give God thanks for setting you free. And the completion of helping someone become free of all of this is restore. Help someone else get free. And that's where the testimonies come in. Post these testimonies, you're helping somebody else. I'm getting emails after emails after emails of new ones coming in all the time. How many cases does it take for the world to see that what I'm sharing with you today is real? How many cases? They're going to continue to come in. I'm going to continue to share this. We've been looking for an ET message for years and years and years. Guess what? The world seems to have missed the one most important ET message we've had for 2,000 years. This enemy that we're dealing with today, masquerading as angels, does not want you to have this message. They're doing everything they can to deceive us from having this message. 
For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the extraterrestrial message that's been missed. This is the one they don't want you to see. They're replacing it with their own. And it's a lie. 